thank you everybody for uh, joining in. Uh, this is one of our first uh, um, expos, virtual expos, uh, and we're doing this for the first time. Massimo has also joined us now, so. <laughs> uh, hi, Massimo. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, give you a very brief introduction to all our guests today. Uh, we have Juan Fernandez, AC, from Spain, from Sieges. Uh, Juan uh, has a lot of experience with large, large format glass and uh, is a very, very good friend of uh, Zeiss. As you can see, he's got a t-shirt on <laughs> and, uh, and uh, frequently also holds the, the lens bar at the AEC uh, Micro Salon in Spain. We have, uh, uh, next we have uh, Louis-Philippe Capel, who is a dear friend of ours uh, as well, who's um, is SBC and uh, is also um, one of the directors at iLight in Brussels, and uh, which is a very, very uh, good top-end rental company uh, in Europe. And um, Louis-Philippe Campel is also co-president of the SPC, which is the Belgian Society of Cinematographers. And uh, finally, we have uh, Massimo Proietti from Italy, from Rome, who is the head of optics and cameras for Panalite, uh, arguably one of the, the biggest uh, rental companies in, in Europe. And um, so, gentlemen, I will start off. Uh, thank you uh, very, very much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, and today, as, uh, as I mentioned, we'll just talk about large format cinematography lenses. Um, because all three of you have had uh, a lot of experience with large format lenses. Um, um, I know for a fact that Luc Lipkapel and Massimo, both, both of you have um, various uh, large format lenses, old and new. And um, so my question to you is initially when the whole large format boom started, was it was it a difficult, um, let's say, medium for you to uh, adapt to from Super Thirty Five, um, uh, or was it fairly easy for you to move in? Uh, so you, you remember my, my English is very similar to my language, and. Uh, <laughs> It's very hard to me to speak in, in, in English totally. This is the web segment. But, um, I, I did try. Try. <laughs> <laughs> no okay. problem, Master. And uh, no, in Italy is the the shooting, the starting now in the the, the large format shooting. And uh, before in the, only in the commercial project. Is the more request in um, commercial, but uh, uh, they mm -hmm. start the project for the um, the use for uh, introduce this this the, the format is the, um, a beautiful movie with uh, in combination the red monster and the your lenses the supreme uh, lenses is a um, Immortale in Italian uh, name the title, yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, you remember the the, the, the project, you know, is uh, very in uh, first in Italy, maybe for the lunch uh, uh, format oh. for the cinema. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a very good uh, uh, movie, and uh, this this movie is a uh, is the the type that uh, I introduce this. Uh, Possibility, a new mode, the shooting, and the Super 35 mode, anamorphic mode, and a large format mode. In, in this case, they use the Vista Vision and uh, in a, a more, more, more large format use. Yes, yeah, sorry, sorry, my English I, again. Sorry, sir. <laughs> If you if you're more comfortable uh, in 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 Italian, I can translate for you. If it's yeah. easier. 
Uh, in this moment, in this moment, there is a the fifty percent the request in uh, for movie, and uh, mm -hmm. for the um, Netflix project is the um, in the animal format in the LF Venice, and the first request is in large format now. Mm -hmm. this, this years the COVID years is the, in the. Starting the shooting uh, uh, large format in uh, in the cinema. Okay, okay. So, uh, so, so the transition has been fairly quick in in Italy, and it's 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 starting. Uh, I think the only hindrance here at the moment, uh, or a hurdle at the moment, is is COVID happened to to all of us, but but. Uh, Hopefully you're all back on your feet in Italy, and uh, and the productions have started now. Uh, uh, that's right, no, Massimo? Yes, yes. Now we're starting, and uh, especially the Netflix project is uh, very fast. We're starting um, mm -hmm. now in the last two weeks. Uh, we start for the commercial in the Italian and the international commercial. For the, mm -hmm. And uh, all, all projects are starting now. Yeah. As uh, the COVID in Italy now is uh, every day in the down line. Mm -hmm. uh, really, in Italy is a very big problem. And you now yeah, you, you see the in the in the paper and the TV. Now is a normal and quiet situation. Uh, Understood. Every every project is starting now. Good, good. Very good. Yeah. What about you, Louis Philip? What do you What do you think? Um, we We started uh, working now from the beginning of July, so we have a few projects that have been stopped before and are restarting. And now we have like, I think we're going to do about twelve feature film during the summer, starting oh. during. So we have like five or six in July and five or six starting in August. Okay. Uh, we are, so of course, we we made the choice to go for Venice cameras on large format and uh, mm -hmm. a Red Ranger. So we have both cameras. Uh, both have not been used so much on large format, but taking the opportunity of the large sensor anyway. Uh, okay. We, but uh, we did uh, already a few a few films, and we have like three projects now with large format lenses. So mm -hmm. people are people are looking for well, of course, for Netflix. We have uh, two Netflix going on, or we, which will be starting. They they're going for on 4K. They're going on large format uh, on Mini LF one and on Sony Venice the other one. And they are going on large format lenses. So mm -hmm. now the question is, um, of course, they don't have more money. So that doesn't mean that it's going to be large budget. It's large format, yeah. not large budget. And yeah. um, and it's still, I mean, for the people like me who doing a lot of still photography, then of course large format makes sense because you have a reference you know very well uh, for. Mm -hmm. We have also people who are uh, thinking about using lenses they know very well, and then maybe for the wide angles, choosing uh, another kind of lenses, so that they, because we all know that for large format you can go, I would say like Master Primes or or Leica, you can use from 40 up, mm -hmm. and 40 um, in large format is. Uh, already it's not a wide angle but it's only it's a short lens so so and then they can go on maybe uh, mm -hmm. uh, have the wide angle or the wider lenses on a large format set so it's a it's a little bit uh, mm -hmm. tricky and also the people i mean there is this hype which is not gone yet and i'm <laughs> makes me crazy about the k35 so uh -huh. So that that the, the very big demand on K35, um, 
well, they cover so so, but they they cover, but so well. Uh, the, you have already the natural vignetting and the natural out of focus in the in the corners. So, but there is a hype on old lenses. There is a hype on like a hair are revisited. There is there is this kind of hype. I mean, you can't go against because that's a artistic decision and um, well, it's it's cost. Uh, it cost no. It doesn't make any sense uh, if you want to discuss about because, in fact, uh, the K thirty five are extremely expensive. So it's uh, mm -hmm. it's old lenses that uh, are of course very beautiful and they're made popular by Hans Made Tail uh, mm -hmm. series and it looks gorgeous if you can use them properly. But uh, mm -hmm. so they are more, even more expensive now to buy than any other set of lenses. It's, and it's very rare to find a good one. But mm -hmm. the people are looking at the series on Netflix and they like the, the look on Netflix or Hulu. or They like the look, mm -hmm. so they want the same look. Well, the look is gorgeous uh, with, with some of the vintage glass. Yes, absolutely, 100%. And, and, and Juan, uh, has, it, has it been uh, an easy enough transition for you or, or are you very similar to Louis-Philippe Capel that you've always shot uh, large format or stills rather that, that just made it easy for you to transition from when you were shooting Super 35 onto large format then? Yeah, for me uh, it has because um, um, I I start uh, a lot um, years ago with uh, technical and scientific uh, filmmaking, and I remember like in the Photosonics a seventy millimeter uh, camera and stuff like um, Vista Vision was at the time uh, this uh, end of the eighties, beginning of the nineties, and uh, really what I always uh, miss or the sacrifice that I was concerned that I, yes, I had a big format, but I have to use um, still photography lenses, which, uh, <laughs> I, yes, you can use them and uh, you can enjoy them, but it's not the same. And now with the with the introduction of, of the new um, cameras, uh, with the new sensors and all that stuff, the good thing is that now uh, they are being made uh, cinema lenses for those formats, and that's a different animal. Uh, I mm -hmm. do enjoy a lot that. Uh, so to me, it was very easy to, to, to or has been uh, easy uh, to move into into that. Uh, transition. Yeah, that transition, but uh, yes, it's, it's, uh, and the other hand, you have uh, beautiful lenses, 100, 100 years of uh, uh, making beautiful lenses for other formats. So some will will um, cover and uh, until there is not, I guess, an standard of a particular size of sensor of what we're going to call uh, that. Mm -hmm. uh, we will not enjoy even more the experience. But yes, it's, it's, it's been very easy for me. I don't see that much uh, of a difference nowadays with the new lenses and they're all beautiful, they're pristine. Yeah, I, I think I would I would agree with you. I think uh, most 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 of the large format glass out there is is very very good high quality glass. Yes. Um. So, so do you think that that uh, large format is 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 a standard that is here to stay uh, and uh, coexist with Super Thirty Five and anamorphic, um, or do you think this is just a uh, uh, it's going to be a rapid peak and, and a drop. Um, um, what are your thoughts um, about large format? Sorry, for me, is a, the, I mind that they introduce a new tools for the director and the, and, and the cinematographer, yes. Possibility now in the, a different, before you shooting in a, in a Film camera, is it, it, now is possible the with the menu and the change the the size the 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 sensor is uh, quick and fast and easy mm -hmm. and uh, for one director and uh, collaboration with the cinematographer is uh, possible uh, you uh, shooting one story and in three different 
modes mm -hmm. in the three different uh, formats. And possible you use the for the uh, in the dark story, you use possible you use the large format or super 35 or both. No, is it? Uh, and this is the very impact, uh, is the, the very power. Different uh, shooting, different format. You use one camera, possibly you use one lenses, and they use it three modes for the shooting. The, uh, this is important. No, the unit only one way in the in the large format, and then you, know, you use the 16 sides or 35. No, another another system. A more system for one story. is for me is important to this. Yeah, but uh, you you're right uh, with that because uh, I mean that's a reason why some people would like to choose the Venice because with the Venice you have all the formats, all the sizes that you you can choose really the size of the image that you are going to use. You can even yeah. truly mix and match, so you can shoot some yeah. of the things in white white screen wide format and some of the things in Super 35. And I think uh, we're expecting from the German uh, company to have uh, a camera which can do both because yes. the CLF is very restricted in that. And and of course, if they bring another camera which will be Super 35, then you're going to need two cameras to do things maybe in the same film, which is, I think, the people were thinking that before the crisis or during the crisis uh, that everything will go better after because the people were aware that uh, some of the things were going wrong and they they take some kind of good uh, decisions and statements as I see you now from about one three weeks of working it's worse than ever it's worse than ever so nobody has learned anything and um, we are facing no demand for films that are for films that are lower budgeted than before because of the uh, extra costs due to COVID rules and regulations. So they have less money to make the film, but the expectations and the requests are higher. And it's the, I mean, I don't know. I mean, how are we going to deal with that in the, in the, I would say long future, and, and also I think that now the well, there there are a lot of hypes, and uh, cinematographers are really I am one, so <laughs> but uh, we are very connected to hype movements. So we had a very very big hype on anamorphic like two or three years ago. Now it's going down a little bit, and a uh, little bit, and then uh, we're talking about large format. But of course, we are going to talk uh, later about large format anamorphic, which yeah. is another thing and another another ratio, and it's not exactly the same, and blah blah blah. So it becomes very difficult to standardize. I mean, the Red Dragon is like forty-four or forty-three millimeter wide, and uh, it's bigger than everybody else. So. All the lenses are not covering the same way the red, the red Ranger yeah. and the Venice than the Mini LF. And it becomes very, very tricky and very, very complicated. Mm -hmm. Besides the fact mm -hmm. that people for one film want a kind of vintage look and for another film they want a kind of very clean and very modern look. And mm -hmm. so that means that you need so many different tools at the same moment and so many different tools at one moment to show them because they want to try everything. They want to see everything, they want to try everything, and then at the last moment they will make up their mind. But it's complicated for, for, for everyone. Yeah. And what do you think? Sorry? What do, you, what do you think about about large format? I think it it, it is it, it has uh, in a way arrived and it will stay. You know. Well, uh, I think it's, it's going to be um, 
the ability to have now the projectors um, commodity is not like uh, used to be with film when you really have to to set up your your standard now the the possibility of it changing and the post production i think it uh, like philip says it uh, uh, what happened is uh, you can mix the stuff now uh, like you mm -hmm. mix the film stock now what we mix is uh, formats and uh, looks and um, things that uh, will make your life easy as a cinematographer to shoot. So now we need a drone. Well, let's do this configuration for the drone. You know, you don't going to be putting the huge things and then you can expand or whatever the the image. So I think more than, than take over traditional 35, because in the other hand, we have a hundred year of lenses that now people want to use. Uh, finally, we can do almost like perfect lenses and uh, perfect cameras. Uh, well, now it's normal mm -hmm. and people want to try uh, being a little bit more organic in the look. And that is, is given by obviously by the a lot by the lenses. So I guess it's going to be living uh, more than taking over. It's just going to be more common to have one format for one thing and another format for the other thing, whatever it is more comfortable for Hankel or for Tron or for a big crane, whatever, you're going to be uh, mixing all that stuff. Or at least that's uh, how I start working now in the commodity of, of what can I use in this moment and is the best option. So we have a film which is starting uh, to time. They're going to shoot uh, Sony Venice. Uh, they, want, they wanted to shoot full format with Supremes. Then the director wanted to shoot anamorphic, and uh, and the, they like it's very it's very mix and match. So they liked very much the look of the cook anamorphic. So they said mm -hmm. shoot, and then the director said no, we are going to shoot master anamorphic. The director said because with the cook anamorphic, I cannot uh, eventually zoom in in one part of the image in one of the corner in one of the sides to take a second shot, like, uh, I mean, you have the wide shot and then like mm -hmm. a little bit closer, but uh, with a, uh, like uh, maybe one to two uh, enlargement. And of course with Cook and Amorphi, you can't do that because they are not, I mean, the, the curvature and the sharpness on the edges is not, that, that doesn't permit. It. So they're gonna, they're gonna shoot master anamorphic because of that. Not because mm -hmm. like the master anamorphic, but because of that. And I think this is this is kind it's of come very very different uh, lenses all together. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Now I, I I do find that uh, a lot more and more than the the directors use uh, the format uh, uh, and the resolution the, using the big format and resolution uh, has a tool they want to get protected for post production. Uh, kind of thing is something mm -hmm. that you kind of have to fight a lot. Uh, no, let me compose because uh, when you recompose, it's going to be different. Let's do it here. No, 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 don't worry. I, I don't have time, or I'll uh, we can uh, do this. No, please don't do the electronic zooming. Let me do it for you, or let me uh, frame for you. And then, uh, yeah. but they, they are using it more and more as a, as a tool, and it's very valid if, if they feel comfortable in the for your filmmaking and they know how to use it, it just uh, will be nice to, uh, to be sure that we can be involved in that project also later in the, in the recomposing or stabilization or whatever, because it's part of our job, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I do have a question which, which dare I say I should be careful how I, how I uh, pose the question. Um, I mean, it, it's about future camera technology and camera manufacturers. Um, I mean, we, we obviously are quite agnostic and we're close with, with all of them. And uh, it's, it's a question which I will ask, not as a, as a, as a representative of Zeiss, but um, just, just as a person, as a DOP, I'd ask this question. So do you think that camera manufacturers when they are planning to build uh, high-end uh, cameras for big features, should they start looking at large format sensors uh, as, a, as a de facto standard? 
uh, so that it covers all the different um, uh, gauges or aspects? Or do you also think that there's going to be larger centers? Um, because I remember back in the day, uh, we, we all said um, when Red came out with uh, their uh, 4K camera, we all said, oh, I don't think there's going to be a bigger sensor than this. And uh, sure enough, there was a bigger sensor. <laughs> And then there was another bigger sensor again. So, 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 do we think that uh, we've we've come to a point where uh, we've reached a point where the sensor size is okay? We now have possibly the largest sensor size in the form of a, an Alexa sixty five, which is beautiful, uh, and an LF. Do we think it will it will become bigger than that? Or is there uh, any chance of that? You think? I think I think uh, there is a, because of the technical reasons or limitations that you have to have with that. Uh, um, uh, there always be uh, living both sides. Uh, you can see it, for example, when all this started uh, with the making the large sensors uh, for the more uh, cinematic look. Uh, everyone kind of moved there. But uh, in the other hand, for example, you need some tools like uh, the ENG cameras where uh, you don't want shadow depth of field if you are uh, shooting in a war uh, scenario. Uh, you want big depth of field and that gives, uh, is coming from the small sensor. So I think uh, uh, it's going to uh, still exist those needs. Or for example, if you need a really fast lens for whatever reason, artistic or, or technical, well, uh, if you go very big, it's going to be limited, or at least with the uh, standards that we have. Uh, if, for example, uh, having a PL mount, a really bigger sensor, well, it's going to be very expensive or a very big lens that people would not have. So, and if you need to do a, a shoot and run kind of situation, you want a little bit smaller compact thing, so you might go back to 35 millimeters. So, no, I just see it has a has an extra tool. That's a problem. Uh, but will be nice to have only two or three standards. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> all this huge mismatch. You know, like uh, so, uh, manufacturers can can say, okay, this is going to be for this standard. This is going to be for this standard. They're just tools, uh, yeah. uh, and you just take whatever you can or what you you value most in that moment. I, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is difficult is, uh, I mean, what is the film for? Where, what is the intention to go with the film? I, mean, more, I, I don't, I, I have no statistics, but uh, maybe 80% of the film are watched on a, on a telephone for the moment, uh, or, or at home on a, on, a big, on a good system because TV sets are becoming better and better. I'm watching uh, Netflix on on the projector, so it's very good. But uh, but mm -hmm. of course, if you if you imagine going uh, uh, size or the, the wide uh, scope of uh, Lawrence of Arabia, I would love to have it mm -hmm. on a sensor, super large sensor. And I think the Alexa 65 or or the Red is 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 that kind of big enough. And uh, and also, mm -hmm. it's still stays compatible with what happens or what existed from the past, which is not too mm -hmm. um, I think if we go uh, for, I mean, large, large sensor would mean like a middle format in photography, or 65 millimeter. So I'm sure there will be, there will be a, a red camera coming in 65 millimeter or with a 65 millimeter sensor. And of course, Panavision will follow uh, with their own or with an adaptation of it. Um, but then, of course, everything becomes more bulky and bigger. Uh, we have this uh, in all in all systems of filmmaking in Europe. We use a lot of, uh, I would say, portable cameras that can go on a drone, that can go on a gimbal, that can go 
handheld very easy because we mm -hmm. make these kind of films. And and, mm -hmm. and large format, I mean, if it's moving and shaking, and if uh, and if it's um, it's uh, it's po it's not portable so much anymore. And also, what I discovered uh, when the um, when the uh, big aperture lenses came out, like the Sumilux, for instance, uh, for the I mean, we had the Zeiss standard, uh, the Zeiss high speed and Mark II, one, two, three. We had the Master Primes, we had the Lake Astemilux, we had these kind of, the people are using them full open. So, because mm -hmm. they behave better when they are full open, or at least at two, but full open. When you go to large format with Supreme lenses, which are opening at 1.4, five, and then you, you film a full, full open, you have to be bloody good uh, focus puller, and also, <laughs> it's very hard. Yeah, it's super <laughs> hard. But also, it can be very ugly, because I mean, if I do like this, or if I do like this, I mean, I'm in and out of focus all the time. Mm -hmm. They play with it. In Hans tail, they play with it, and you have half of the face which is out of focus. Yeah. And it's nice, but you can't make it uh, a habit. You can't make it. That's the way we do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also panning, panning speeds, and uh, these kind of things should be adapted because otherwise it looks very ugly, and you you didn't gain anything. You you I think you have a worse image. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. The Lawrence Davabia movie is the base light is uh, I don't remember by five point six eight. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now if you log in a in eight hundred ISO. It's very too hard for the focus puller. Yes, the very Superman, the man yeah. fell focus puller. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's behind us, so we we will never leave that. <laughs> but I, yeah. I, I would never dream of being a focus puller now. Well, they have better tools yeah. as well, huh? because we were only doing this, so mm -hmm. we had no. Yes. And in these years, another introduce another um, uh, a new because uh, yes, it was shooting in uh, in a large format, but for Netflix in the, introducing these years the HDR in uh, mm -hmm. in uh, filming and uh, a, a, a totally different shooting and the lighting for the for cinematographer, yeah. Uh, for me, these two elements uh, is um, have the uh, running in the, in the no in the uh, I don't remember the name in English uh, insieme camminano insieme help me walk together walk together yeah yeah very hard and you see the, the testing uh, last uh, week uh, for shooting a normal mode in uh, HDR live in the monitor. It's very different. Maybe this combination for the mm -hmm. in these years have the I knew select the cinematographer. I, I spoke better. Now all the uh, cinematographer they invent. Now you see the monitor for the uh, in a live view the uh, the photo the cinematographer. And uh, for tomorrow, for uh, you introduce this uh, HDR, it's the same with the film camera, no? Have the hard select, the, the cinematographer for tomorrow. And me, um, Sandeep, for me, I speak in Italian now for you and uh, mm -hmm. me, me in translation. Cioè, yes. da domani, da domani, mm -hmm. L'introduzione del large format e della HDR darà un taglio e una selezione dei nuovi cinematografi, dei nuovi direttori della fotografia, che eh, fino ad oggi erano aiutati un pochino anche con i, i tools, i, electronic tools, no? Vedi sulla TV. E l'HDR, il large format è come lo sviluppo della pellicola di ieri darà un, un taglionetto di molti cinematografi. Non so se mi hai capito. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sì, sì, capito. 
Okay. So, so what Matthew is, is saying with that with the introduction of large format lenses and HDR, uh, there, there seems to be a, a, a more definitive niche of different cinematographers uh, who, who have to, who are basically a, a new crop of cinematographers because of the demands of, of what HDR uh, just just comes that you know you have to light differently, you have to work very differently. So it does show up uh, uh, the art form itself that uh, that you know what you used to do in the past is 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 okay, but you need to know uh, from from shooting film, uh, high dynamic range, and, uh, and and utilizing all those techniques to to actually. We shoot high dynamic range now, uh, so in, in the digital side of things. So, so that, that's what Massimo was saying that you now will see the difference uh, between somebody who can actually handle high dynamic range and who's not used to seeing high dynamic range. You have to light and treat things very, very differently. But I think that that's not bad, huh? I think uh, I think I agree. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely, yeah, yeah. Because uh, we, I mean, we uh, we went to. Uh, absolutely agree with Massimo. We 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 went through a period when uh, we had a, a lot of new cinematographers coming on the market, and they have absolutely no bloody idea of exposure. Yeah. So because we fix that in post. And, uh, well, now they are a little bit more accustomed to the digital media, but uh, when you're talking to post-production uh, people, and um, and you also hear comments that uh, well, this camera has a lot of noise, or this camera has, has noise. I don't know. I've been shooting at night, and I have uh, noise. No, no, the camera is not noisy. It's badly exposed. Yes, mm -hmm. that's all. I mean, but the camera is not noisy. I mean, we have no. No, no more noisy camera now. They are, they are especially good. I mean, maybe we they could be a little bit more noisy to be more organic, but um, so but they are it's badly exposed. And we we discovered that we because I was part of a kind of um, I would say an inquiry or I mean at least an analysis of images from from a big manufacturer and uh, because there, there was a complaint about noise. And um, and uh, we discovered that the images were two stops underexposed. And of mm -hmm. course, if they are already a little bit dark, then you, when you have to bring that up, it works. But you see, you see that it has been lifted. And uh, and um, yeah, I think um, HDR is, is can be an horrible tool. Can be very very nice if everything is properly set up. But if not, it's an horrible tool. It's quite an unforgiving. Uh, um, system or, or you have to be very very careful I suppose you don't light properly and you you can uh, find the set out you can see different things that you don't want to see I suppose mm. well the problem is, is that it's going to uh, happen some problems and the uh, people will want to of course if you invest in the HDR as a producer etc you want to want to have that extra thing, but that is going to be a mistake because uh, there has to be a very well care um, uh, control after in how much bright is bright. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Otherwise, it's going to fail as the last uh, wave of uh, 3D. Everyone, everyone became a, a stereographer because they have an app in the telephone and. Uh, and a calculator and uh, it's yeah. not that you need to interpret things and then it's going to happen the same it's like with the hdr uh, i see that people is going to be cranking things so just to get that big feeling uh, so we need to try to work into that kind of control and also uh through through the itc we, we've been talking about in the technical committee from imago we've been talking about uh, uh, the idea of translate that also into the into the metadata for by the time also the televisions in the future will have to have that one. Uh, so what was the artistic intention originally 
so nobody else can crank that uh, just to have extra uh, control because the, the people is not prepared in that sense. Uh, uh, so they're going to be difficult to try to standardize or to try to control uh, from the artistic uh, thing, exposure and um, the storytelling to the final view is going to be very difficult. That I, 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 is what I see coming with that type of thing. But also the size of pixels remain always the same. So of course, if you are going in a very dark scene and in a very, or a very detailed and dark scene, it's better to be in large format, of course, mm -hmm. because you, you have uh, more, more information. But uh, it's the same like between 16 millimeter and 35. Of course, yes. night scenes were always better in 35 than in 16 because the, the, the granularity was the same uh, in size. And then, mm -hmm. of course, you lose details uh, if you, you are very close. So, yeah, large format in that sense is, is very, very good. Then, then uh, back to the lenses. Um, and uh, of course, Zeiss uh, was doing a great job on that, uh, bringing up the radians, um, uh, which uh, are a little bit more in front uh, of uh, the request of the moment of people wanting a little bit more flary images and more uh, softer, etc. From my point of view, as a as a rental house, I would love. It's impossible, I know, but I would love to be it, uh, customable. I would love to mm -hmm. be it uh, that you uh, you buy the lens and then you. Of course, there is a price, but you buy the adapters and you can make it softer, flary. Uh, gold, gold uh, look, uh, whatever. But mm -hmm. when you, I mean, the market is so complicated. The, the competition is so complicated, and uh, and the money is not there. And uh, maybe it will take a lot of time to be back. So I would love to have a kind of a accessory set for the for the Supremes to to mo to modify the look and 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 propose to the cinematographer, then yeah, here it is. You can try what you want. I mean, the master anamorphic where with the flare set, well, that was not completely, because it was not completely, uh, we were not convinced. Uh, but but yeah. I think it's a way of, uh, of, uh, of doing things which maybe will be, will help the people to go for it. Mm -hmm. Buying a second set of uh, cook uh, anamorphic, if you want special flair, I mean, it's in 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 some sense it's insane because you have already everything, and then the changes are subtle and they are not that big, and uh, yeah. it's a hell of a uh, uh, 200 uh, 200k again uh, to get the full set. So, and I think maybe this is something that has. To, will change or has changed that um, we should take care about the general economy of uh, filmmaking and that enter in that. Mm -hmm. Because the lenses are not, I mean, the most of the large format lenses are not more expensive than the previous PL. Maybe they are even a little bit cheaper in general. So that is affordable and it's nice, it's really nice. But then if you, if you need uh, for each film another kind of set of lenses because you need a kind of different look and because there is a hype on this look for the moment on Netflix or whatever, and then you need that and maybe in two years that, I think K35 in two years that we don't hear about them anymore. I mean, I'm kind of convinced that the price uh, went like this and it will go like this in maybe two or three, three or five years, huh? maybe a little bit yeah. longer. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Interesting. I mean, um, Radiance was definitely a pre-COVID uh, <laughs> release, <laughs> but... No, it's um, sad. It's sad. It, it, no, but but uh, I mean, truth be told, 
we're doing okay with 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 radiance at the moment uh, i mean thankfully uh, in europe now that it, we're all getting back to work the requests are there uh, um, i think a lot of dops who had initially planned and had halted productions are now back and and those those productions that i've resumed have actually uh, started asking for them and uh, it, 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 it seems it's, it's okay. We're, we're actually happy with the way uh, we're progressing. But I do understand uh, from a larger economical standpoint, um, um, absolutely. Um, owning equipment is it's just never easy, but yes. I think the, the, the best the best investment in equipment are, has always been and it's still the same are lenses. So and this is mm -hmm. this, yes. this makes Panavision uh, successful because they have their own lenses. This makes Hawk uh, successful because they have a kind of a unique uh, kind of lenses. And for for the rental company like like us or even in Holland. I mean the, the the quality of the sets that you have, or the the vi variety of the sets that you have, make you richer. Because everything mm -hmm. else, mm -hmm. has, mm -hmm. I will not say we lose money on everything else, but almost. So, at least the mm -hmm. lens they stand for, as you said, uh, fifty years, uh, sixty years, hundred years, maybe. And, uh, and they will stay there. I mean, if they are well maintained, they will stay and they will still have a nice look. So, but the, the rest of the equipment is this consumable now. And, uh, and of course, so mm -hmm. I understand that the, the investment in lenses is very, very important and very nice. And also very nice because you feel that you're buying something for the future. Instead mm -hmm. of everything else you buy and you know that in two years time, you can just it's worth nothing and you can just uh, leave it on the shelf because nobody wants to shoot with it anymore. Absolutely. Well, that, that's one yeah. of the things that you know, we, we did we did discuss uh, with Supreme uh, when we were uh, developing them and, and, and we wanted to make lenses that were, um, like, I wouldn't say future-proof, but, uh, but at least it would would carry the technology forward into the years. And that's where we actually, uh, thanks to Cook, uh, utilized uh, the slash eye data technology and got, came up with uh, uh, extended data. And uh, that's actually proven quite uh, good for us uh, because there's more and more uh, the effects companies starting to look at this uh, technology and starting to use it. Um, um, because uh, one, because it's a scalable uh, piece of technology, we can keep adding more, uh, you know, different parameters on this. Right now, we have uh, shading or vignette, and and uh, we have uh, distortion data. But uh, we are uh, more than happy to talk to to more VFX houses. We have some feedback which we're already working on. And uh, and we'd like to add uh, scale this up, add more columns, add more uh, parameters, more features to it. Um, so, um, I mean, where where do you see uh, uh, VFX uh, with with regards to lenses now? Um, we we're actually listening to a lot of uh, of how they shot Mandalorian. Uh, with all the LED panels and and uh, and the use of Unreal Engine, um, is that something that uh, you are starting to uh, hear a lot more in your circles? Yes, we are we are working on a project um, uh, which will be uh, starting quite soon. Uh, of a virtual studio uh, with LED screens. So, uh, mm -hmm. so this, this, well, because in Belgium we have Paco and they are very, very mm -hmm. up to date with the screens. 
and they mm-hmm. wanted to share a project with them and some uh, public funding as well, just to uh, to start to initiate uh, a project with, with some very high, I would say, high-end specialists of uh, VR uh, shooting. So, so I think uh, Eli will put, uh, of course, everything which belongs to the camera and the lighting, and uh, they're gonna put the technology and, uh, and I, I guess and I guess, I'm not really following it, but. I guess Barco will put uh, the LED screen, but uh, mm-hmm. there, there has, I mean, there, there has been a forum uh, like two, three weeks ago between all the regional funds of uh, film funding in Europe, and uh, that was one of the topics on the table, to, because uh, people see that there will be restrictions for traveling, and we don't know how long it will take. And uh, suddenly Luxembourg is becoming red and you, you can't go to Luxembourg anymore. So, and uh, of course, big scale films and blah, blah, that's something else. But again, on, on I would say regular budget films, I mean, maybe if you need to do a car chase or if you need to do uh, uh, images in front of uh, Vaticano, maybe you can do it on virtual, on virtual images. And mm-hmm. the Mandalorian uh, works well. Of course, it's a huge scale uh, series, but uh, it works pretty well. Huh? I mean, it's mm-hmm. it's really the star. Absolutely. Yes, until, until, um, doesn't, until doesn't come available um, in more um, uh, common user. You know, uh, right now it's a high end tool. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's mm-hmm. very specialized tool. It's a great tool, uh, but. Uh, People uh, will not be comfortable yet until it's, it's not included, like in a program, a basic program, you know, that you can have or to experiment, etc. Uh, it's going to take time to to uh, keep going, but definitely it's a, a, a super tool that we are not using enough uh, uh, yet. But I, I think that will be future very slowly. But uh, you can add more functions. Uh, to it than especially like mo- in, in motion control or whatever. I think there is some some things and we have not find out and we can use it for more. <laughs> Great to have it just in case. Indeed, indeed. No, absolutely. And uh, I think we have one last question before we go to the audience Q&A. Um, so, the last question is, would you like to see anything uh, from from Zeist in terms of in the, in the future, in terms of development? Is there anything you would like and you think that, that the market is missing, that, that that's something that, you know, uh, us as manufacturers should start looking at, perhaps? Please, please. Philippe? I don't. Was well, I don't see. I'm, I'm a little bit pessimistic, but I don't see anything missing. I think there are too many things. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I talk, I talked to Sandeep already. I said that sure, it would be nice, but of course uh, we we know the restrictions and the the DNA um, uh, uh, between Ari and and Zai, so it would be a kind of. A, Anamorphic from uh, Supremes. That would be, of course, mm-hmm. nice to see. Uh, but again, the la- I mean, we. I think from a cinematographer point of view, from uh, the rental house, also from the technical committee in Imago, I think what we want to have is a standardization. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that's the nightmare. I mean, wh- why all these cameras, they want to be original and have a different size? Of sensor, I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't say, I don't say one is better than the other. Or one is, I mean, we, I prefer this size or this size. And I say, gosh, I mean, it's, I mean, when you're talking, a cinematographer and director, they talk about focal length. They say we're going to shoot this 35 millimeter. We're going to shoot this uh, 85. Well, blah blah blah. But it doesn't mean anything anymore because uh, 85, uh, 55 millimeter on a red uh, Ranger doesn't mean the same as on the Venice. And so, yeah, we don't, I mean, focal length where 
the ultimate reference for uh, framing and for um, mise en scène. And now, I mean, you have to guess a little bit. You have to guess, and mm -hmm. uh, and that I think that's that's something which makes all lives more complicated. And at one moment, there is where is the need to be original and different? I mean, mm -hmm. why? And, and you cannot use the director's viewfinder anymore that easy. Yeah. And you have tapes and all the ones I have is like, which one I use when I'm shooting with this camera or that camera? And then, oh, but I'm changing format. Okay, does it. Yeah. Yeah, we, the, 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 the cinematographer director, so we, we started a film in Red Ranger. They were asking for a director's viewfinder. I say, well, I don't have one. There are only one or two, I mean, models available. I don't know if they cover perfectly the framing of the of the the Red Ranger in 8K, blah blah blah. And I say, well, I try uh, Alpha Seven as a viewfinder, and I I found it pretty close. I mean, it's uh, it's it's very strange because it's only a, a 36 by 24. So it's but when you when you compare, there is only maybe. In depth, maybe like five centimeter difference. I mean, you move a little bit, or you just pull off a little bit. So, yeah, okay. Then, uh, but and and then with the anamorphic, it, it's worse because you have a one point. We have two anamorphic, one point seven anamorphic, one point five anamorphic. What the hell is this? I mean, one point six now. Yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> I just rent them another camera has a viewfinder. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Okay. All right, and so we're, we're, we're more than happy for uh, for Q&A uh, and we'll take questions. Uh, so um, I'm just waiting to see if there are any questions uh, published. Uh, so please feel free to ask because we still have some time and uh, yeah. I'm just also, yeah. We haven't had any, any uh, questions from, uh, from the public. Per se. So, um, I think everyone was was quite um, interested in listening to uh, you three of three of you. You can use the, the chat uh, to ask your Q and A's if you like. And this is the first session you do, Sandeep, or uh, this this is my my uh, my third session of the day. <laughs> hey, hey, okay, okay. Yeah. But uh, no, no questions uh, today. <laughs> no problem. Okay. Oh, um, well, if there are no, no more questions, then uh, I guess, uh, you know, I think it was a very, very good session, uh, which uh, we've uh, basically managed to, uh, oh, there's, there is, there is. So, Sergio, uh, exposure for low light and, and lens uh, choice, I think. Um, to, to
Sergio, what, what was the question really? Uh, uh, did you mean um, what's the best exposure for, for low light and, and, and what lenses one would use? As we wait for Sergio, uh, Rahul uh, has asked to share a crop ratio sheet. Uh, yes, of course. Um, uh, Rahul, you have something called handouts. Uh, if you uh, if you just go to handouts, uh, I actually have a crop ratio sheet where you, which you can actually download for various sensors and and um, yeah, uh, you, you'll have all that data. It's a single page PDF. And, and you can download from there. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's actually just in in the chat itself. Uh, in just just next to Q and A, it says handouts. Ah, oh, okay. Sergio has replied. Uh, so, new lens benefits in 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 low light. Well, um, well, yes. I guess uh, with the new lenses, uh, compared with the old lenses, what you have is uh, uh, because the technology in all lenses are made uh, more for film. Uh, so, in film had uh, for color film you have the three layers so the the optimization of, of the lenses was for every uh, color to lay down in each particular layer now with new sensors we don't have that uh, in electronic uh, so you might have some uh, uh, color fringing or um, uh, color shifts when you are working completely wide open. So in the new lenses that are designed for a flat surface, um, then uh, you cannot really work all the way open and they are uh, sharper or they, they will have less chromatic aberrations uh, in that sense. So new lenses for that, uh, if you're going to be working all the way open in uh, electronic sensors, uh, will make sense to, to use new lenses. Yes. And also contrast is better. I mean, oh, yeah. That is, that is of course, an artistic choice. But uh, if you're looking for a very sharp and contrasting image, of course, contrast is way better. Uh, yes. yes, and modern designs probably are, are having elements that instead of focusing in an angle that are more uh, flat, so uh, will be better distribution. That's why you get the more contrasty images uh, and cleaner in a way. Mm -hmm. well, most of the new lenses, uh, at least that are being produced world over, are, are being produced with uh, uh, four uh, electronic sensors at the moment uh, as as Juan mentioned, so back in the day, it was all uh, for emulsion or film. Um, but nowadays, we do uh, take sensors into consideration. Um, we also look at sensor, um, you know, cover glass or low-pass filters, 
we have to calculate for all of that at the moment. And uh, that's how we, we pretty much uh, uh, do lenses now. And and I think one of the topics we also discussed briefly was HDR. Uh, and and that's, uh, um, that's something that um, I think the new lenses, uh, especially Supremes in that respect, are uh, catered for HDR. Uh, at least we do have a, a system, a machine that, that basically measures stray light. Uh, and, and stray light is, is the one thing that actually does, uh, uh, you know, get it, it does diminish uh, HDR. So this is something that uh, we want to avoid. Um, and and I, we, we did a previous session with uh, flares with one of the doctors. And uh, yes, you have cameras that, that can record uh, 16 stops uh, or so, but, uh, uh, but yeah, you, um, if your lens can only, uh, if your lens can only do um, 10 stops or 12 stops, it's pointless. So you have to make your lens um, you know, uh, you have to make it available. So that's pretty much uh, what we have to do with low light. So nowadays you can see with, with these sensors, you can see the shadows, the, you can see the, the area on, let's say, um, a vector scope or a waveform. You can actually see uh, the area and manipulate the area between the, the toe and the knee. Yeah. So you can actually... Uh, um see the areas uh like the shadows uh within the creases of the shirt or or hair detail that's what we we concentrate on these days to actually show all that uh, i mean some of the older lenses could be a little more difficult to to show all that kind of detail on a digital sensor yeah also if you want to uh you were talking about flares the problem with flares is going to be a uh, counteract with uh Internal flare uh, diminishes the contrast, so diminishing the contrast uh, is going to counteract with uh, HDR. We really need uh, super clean lenses and super sharp lenses, uh, and using the matte box and using the even the the uh, hard mats will help you uh, going uh, to achieve that uh, because it will give you more range with all lenses. Mm -hmm. uh, going to be a, a mistake that you have some look, you will not get all that uh, super high contrast difference that we are looking for. Yeah. Okay. In, the, in, in this mode, for, for the sensor, the digital sensor, the, the, the lenses is uh, large and uh, very sharp, is uh, maybe introduce a, a, a whole system for the meta box in the, the movie, the the filter in uh, 40 degrees because they have the more element in uh, the glass the yeah. first uh, in the front of the sensor and uh, for the light the bulb or the the car on the front is a very ghost uh, uh, mode no? it's, uh, maybe possibly the use uh, again the same I in the Nordic shooting uh, in the in the old mad box yeah. The, mm -hmm. the, the filter in, in angle, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I had a, I had a film a few years ago. The lenses were, uh, I would say, rinsed. So they, they were kind of uh, the the coating of the lenses was very very old and not that good. So the lenses were very nice, but when yeah. I had extreme contrast scene uh, yeah. with uh, back backlight of the sun reflections and these kind of things, almost without filter have a double image. So of course, the sh this is because the coating was off and because the, the lenses were not contrasty enough to handle the high contrast of the scene or the yes. high contrast of the, of the landscape. And, uh, and, and, and I was using diffusion filter in France, so I had to, to put the the, the, the filters at an angle just to avoid mm -hmm. the reflection out. Yes, mm -hmm. of course, with the, the modern lens, this uh, I think, yeah, that doesn't happen anymore. I mean, the, this is much, much better. 
Yes, it depends not good. only for the lenses, but the, the big, the glass yeah. on front, the sensor. Have yeah. the one coating, have the different glass, the same the camera, but this is the problem. Yeah. Yeah. We have uh, two questions from the audience as well. We have a question uh, specifically from, from someone called Tushar. Is, is asking how does full frame lens how is a full frame lens useful for high dynamic range? Oh, it's, it's what uh, I think we just uh, say when you have the 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 full frame, uh, you will be uh, taking um, uh, in a way sharper images. Uh, so <coughs> sharper images is going to mean more contrasty. One thing that uh, we have to understand is also uh, uh, when we use, uh, talking about the standardization, when we use the mounts like the PL mount or the Panavision mount, it's very difficult to make uh, perfect lenses uh, because you have to, uh, you go so far away uh, because of the mirror. So controlling all those things are very, very difficult. That's why in the big large sensors in order not to uh, make a huge lens uh, nowadays uh, the solution is to get closer to the sensor we don't have the mirror anymore getting closer to the sensor it's easier to make a, a better design less expensive and less bulky with less compromises so uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's a different amount of course but uh, that uh, the advantage of going closer you will get a cleaner image so again for hdr use is what you want to do pretty much so to answer mm -hmm. yes the uh, full format will be easier always whenever the format is bigger you can make more mistakes it's more forgiven mm -hmm. than <laughs> the smaller <laughs> format is you need to nail exposure you need to nail the everything so the smaller the format yeah. the more the bigger the format, well, you have proportional uh, more uh, liberties to save it later. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have uh, one more question from Arindam, uh, who's uh, basically uh, is asked is a good question uh, in consideration to HDR. Um, watch uh, with regards to exposure. What should one pay more attention to the highlights or the shadow region, or does it depend on the camera? Oh, I think for, for right. digital sensors, I think it's, it's <laughs> definitely uh, pay attention to the the highlights. Yeah, <laughs> because in HDR, they'll completely it's absolutely go i think and that's it this you can't can't retrieve them i think you get you get easier uh more details in the low lights uh than in the highlights so i think you should take care more of the highlights than uh than the than the the, the, the two or the the knee of the of the mm -hmm. of the curve uh, mm -hmm. But I have not. I have not enough experience. I've seen many things, but I have not experienced on the on the field about using it. Um, and I think the difference also uh, what because most of the HDR uh, for film and for feature is done afterwards. Uh, <coughs> it's different than on TV broadcasting. I think it's completely different. Yes. What I've seen, different. What I've seen on TV broadcasting most of the time was horrible because it, it's a marketing tool uh, mm -hmm. it doesn't it, it has not to be used as a marketing tool it has to be used to get a creative uh, input of getting all more details on the top or more details on in the shadows but i don't want to have an overblown uh, whites uh, that uh, hurts me uh, when I, I I look at them, so so I think it's more a creative tool that that depends on the film. I mean, if the film is completely dark or if the film is completely uh, it's a bright film, a comedy, uh, it's complete. I think the use is completely different. Mm -hmm. Also, yeah. not be uh, using all the full brightness all the time. Uh, you you 
cannot artistically and also physically will be very tired uh, sure. rise and you get numb etc cetera, etc cetera. so you just want some big moments for example if you have a sunset uh, then you will crank that so yes i i, I agree with, with you that you should be exposing uh, more for the highlights uh, to be safe there and decide where you want that highlight particular to be and with how much details you want it to be uh then the post-production is going to be better and also uh like uh, it's an, a new technology so for example in my experience what i have seen projected uh is not an, um, uh, as uh, powerful per se to see like when it's emitted in other words when it comes from an screen uh, you get more of the sensation of the hdr than when it's projected on a, on a screen uh, because of the limitation mm -hmm. of, the, of the projection of the light and projectors, etc. So uh, probably you will have to to expose different uh, for when is your final thing. So in the worst, go back to the old technique of make test and um, before and make it with the whole system of you're going to be using. It goes for a projected screen or for a, a emanating screen i i think yes and also i think that uh, what i've seen in big labs uh, in, in, even in, in la i mean the the it's a really a marketing tool for broadcasting and uh and uh, it doesn't do very well because you you get blind after uh, one hour because they of course they want to show you the power of the system and so you get the maximum brightness most of the time from exterior scenes so you have always it's composed that you have an element that is at the maximum brightness but it's i mean it's not nice you don't need that you don't you know if you're walking in the street you're not uh, blinded by a lot of elements all the time i mean sometimes yes you have a reflection of a window, of the sun, or this kind of thing, and that's nice, but not all the time. I mean, it's not a challenge to get uh, the maximum brightness. And it's also going to be a challenge for the audience to see a full movie uh, picking all the time those effects. Uh, is is uh, people is going to be taking away the the eyesight from the screen uh, because it's just very tiring. Uh, mm -hmm. the eyes. And also, theoretically, depending on the high levels of brightness and the frequency of the projector or whatever, you could even have a, a scissor, <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, an epileptic uh, scissor. Yeah. Thing. So, I, think yeah. I think which is interesting in HDR is that you can, you can more handle the saturation in the highlights. I mean, instead of having everything blushed and uh, with the whiteness or something, you can really work on the on the colors in the in the highlights, and that is very interesting. That is something. It's not about brightness, but it's about saturation, and that's nice because also, then you get, you get a more realistic picture. Also, yeah. I, I like a lot uh, the look of night scenes in HDR. You know, like city nights, uh, the views of city nights for the. That is my favorite uh, mm -hmm. kind of things. Uh, that's where I enjoy it more than the mm -hmm. others. In both, in both, uh, in both sides. I mean, in the low lights also, when it's very low and very dark, you lose the colors. So, mm -hmm. of course, you can manage more the colors, and that's nice. Of course, it's nice. Yeah. yeah. We have uh, one more question from Pierre Mazan. Um, um, so the question is, do you think using full frame lenses on super 35 sensors would be a good idea in, in order to have even less distortion and loss of focus on the sides? If it's a well-designed lens, it uh, uh, will not be a problem. Uh, in other words, this will be like when we were using super 35 lenses or 35 lenses in super 16 or 16 millimeter. Mm -hmm. uh, you are only using the center. Of course, you'll have less uh, aberrations. Uh, but also, 
you are working with uh, telephotos all the time in, in a way so you could not have wide angle lenses uh, if you use that technique uh, i will just recommend use nice uh, modern uh, lenses that are designed for that sensor probably so you have a, a, a wider range of focal lengths I think that definitely the circle of illumination is much, much bigger on uh, uh, on a Super 35 sensor when you use full frame glass. Uh, again, uh, depending that uh, the optical design is, is done well and it's a really good lens. Uh, so, so yes. Uh, and, and all of that, obviously, again, the optical design uh, will mean uh, well controlled distortion depending on the focal length as well, I suppose, and and the the, the focus fall off. Um, I mean, we know Supreme, for example, has a very nice gradual uh, focus fall off. Uh, and there are other lenses which aren't designed to fall off like that. So, um, uh, which, I mean, it's a, it's a choice, I suppose. So it, again, depends on 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 what the lens is, I guess. Uh, yeah. A lot of people, a lot of people are using uh, uh, in Super Thirty Five lenses that are not covering Super Thirty Five. Huh? So mm -hmm. Super Thirty Five, and they like, I like as well. Huh? But they like this fall off of focus in the corners, the small vignetting that's coming yeah. together, and we kind of like it. Uh, so, so I think it really depends on, uh, of course, if you want to use, uh, if you want to shoot Super 35 in a 6K or in a high resolution and your intention is to, to get at the same time the, the wide shot and the middle shot, then maybe it's better to do it uh, with large camera lenses because mm -hmm. you're sure that on the edges it is kind of the same. Mm -hmm. And in the center, because yes, yes. the is very bigger. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. I think uh, we've I think we've done well uh, to fill uh, an hour and a half. <laughs> oh, excellent! No, uh, I. I think we've done good, and and you know I'd like to thank all of you uh, for making this happen. Uh, it's 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 our first time, but uh, yeah, it, it definitely um, make makes it um, it's it's worthwhile. I'd say. But it looks like we have one last question. I think. Okay. Um, they wake it up. They wake it up. They <laughs> 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 so, you know, so just 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 uh, became a lot more interesting. So we have uh, from Adindam again. Uh, uh, how much a lens flare can lead to decrease in contrast or noise in blacks in some cases? Uh, hence the lens flares versus high contrast, which attributes comes as priority in choosing lens, uh, especially in the large formats, or or flares can be added later, especially for digital formats. Well, um, <laughs> I, think, I think from a flare perspective, um, uh, well, what happens is uh, it's, it's it's a good question, but uh, I mean, when you do have flare, it, the the flare is definitely going to break that image, and and you're going to lose contrast. And and the idea is you need to have lenses that will maintain the contrast in the image. Um, I mean, it, it kind of, again, broadens into uh, lenses such as uncoated lenses, um, where when we did have uncoated lenses, uh, obviously the T-stop would drop because, because once you remove the coating, you have uh, um, the transmission is lost. Hence the noise, uh, but you do have a flare and, and you're actually breaking that image uh, in, in two ways. One, you're dropping the contrast and you're also making the image darker uh, in a way. 
which is why we went down the route of, of, of radiance, where we said, okay, we're not going to strip off any coating. We're actually going to maintain coatings for all our lenses, but we're going to play with the coatings so that we can maintain the same contrast uh, at T1.5 and uh, also give you that beautiful blue flare that, that a lot of DOPs like and, and keep it like that um, uh, without having a flare. So it's a definitive uh, flare all throughout. Um, that's what we went for. Um, as for digital flares, yes, you can add digital flares, but if the VFX company does not add them properly, um, uh, anyone anyone with a, a trained eye can very, very quickly gauge and say that, oh, that's a digital flare. <laughs> it's not necessary. Yeah. The problem is continuity as well. So if you if you have one lens which is flaring and then the next shot is it's not flaring, then you have a problem of mm -hmm. continuity. So it's better to have a, a kind of a regular and maintain contrast on your images, which is a little bit what, what is about photography and telling stories with images. And and then, of course, if you want to tweak the images and if you want to play with the contrast, um, you can always do it uh, later. Um, mm -hmm. I, think, uh, I think it's very rarely that you that you are playing. I mean, you play maybe more with the flares than anamorphic. Because it's yes. a wider image, and then, and of course, the flares are quite beautiful all the time. Um, but uh, in, in spherical, is a little bit. I think it's a little bit different. Um, and it's, it's difficult because yeah, you have flare. spherical flares, and absolutely. Well, technically speaking, a uh, uh, flare is uh, some. Technically speaking, is something that you don't want. And yes, then, uh, it's an aberration. <laughs> that's, that's something. To a scientist, it's an aberration. Yes, uh, because that aberration, a part of that aberration, is is going to be uh, bouncing unwanted light, and that will uh, uh, kill the contrast, of course. So, if you want a, a very high contrast, that's your enemy. Now. Uh, that's technically speaking. If we go artistically, uh, well, who can say it's wrong or good or bad? Me personally, uh, now the difference between optical flare is uh, natural and three-dimensional because it's made in a three-dimensional world, the spheric lens or the anamorphic lens. So it has a totally different feeling than when you do it in, uh, in post-production. In post-production, it's not a three-dimensional flare image. It's a two-dimensional flare image. So that's why, uh, like Sandeep says, that, uh, that I can tell. I mean, it feels fake. And one of the other things, but in the nice thing is, if you add it later in the in post-production, you can maintain the contrast and have a huge flare in any color that does not affect the rest of the image, which, in my opinion, is kind of wrong because it's not uh, natural. But if you are doing a, a, a movie about the space or science fiction or whatever, you can get away with it because it's not, uh, uh, it's a different world. So it's a uh, different Now, it is true that if you add it in post-production, you can control in how much, where, etc. you want it. If you add it in camera, the moment you are shooting, that's it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. That, you have and you cannot um, uh, go back. So it's a different decision. It's, uh, it's more an artistic and, and practical decision, I guess. But I think mm -hmm. that's why uh, Hans Made Tail was so popular huh? because the handling of the flares and the handling of the, let's say, it's rough to say it, but the bad quality of the lenses, but the handling of it and the continuity of it, it's unbelievable mm -hmm. good. Really, really good. And of course, they're playing. They're I mean, cinema, the two cinematographers. They are really playing with it. They're playing with the uh, taste, well, according to me, but also with a uh, great control, really great control. Yeah. yeah, actually, when you see when you see artists, technicians working in anamorphics, it's, it's an art because mm -hmm. 
the the when you are ensembling it, they have to decide. Uh, it's like cooking; they have to take something that is bad and deciding, okay, where is artistically bad, or where where are we to put this defect to be artistically? So that's why all the different flavors and it. Uh, but it's a lot of uh, technician designing or deciding uh, which, uh, where you're going to have that uh, default uh, and then you enjoy it. Yes. Maybe the last of the Sandeep uh, signal, maybe. Yes, I guess. <laughs> yep. Yes. Hello, Sam. Yeah, it's free. It's frozen, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Very serious. Yes, the, the flare or no flare is the question. But for me, is not the the best uh, system you now. The best uh, lenses. Maybe is it the pasta with uh, tomato, without tomato, or with uh, the cheese or no cheese? Is it? <laughs> Is this no? Yeah, true. Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. Totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the pasta that makes the mama is different than makes the other mama. So, <laughs> so yes, the first is a, a totally different world. And, yeah. Uh, so yes. uh, uh, depends on on the moment of your life. You feel more flurry or more sharp sometimes. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. We, we lost Cindy, but I think. No. no. <laughs> Maybe more question is uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. is the downing that can the PC the computer yeah. <laughs> yes, in, in the I in this moment in this uh, situation for COVID, uh, the my life the, the working life is uh, changed and. Uh, you use uh, a new mode for the um, change uh, the, the, the mind, the possibility, the kind of the people. Uh, now, no, I don't know if you use the same. Uh, use the more the web seminar, more web, um, yeah. the same these uh, large format cinematography lenses uh, uh, from Zeiss. Yes. The COVID, uh, one, one aspect uh, positive. For me, for the in this model, I have the possibility you have the hard contact with the new person. Yeah. Maybe uh, how, how many times maybe you uh, go in uh, NBC or uh, NBA or in a Munich uh, event, but no, in this model, I have the very contact. The, the very hard content. Yes, we, we we did. I did a lot of. Uh, I really did a lot of uh, Zoom meeting or team meeting. Yes, and I, I go back, and I, I'm and I quite kind of like it because I think it's a, it's efficient and uh, of course it's tiring. It's more tiring, and you so and you 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 want to see the people. You want to hug them. I mean, I want to hug Sandeep. Uh, we haven't seen for so long, but. Uh, yeah. but of course, but of course, I mean it's efficient and uh, and you can do it more. I mean you can really. I mean it's very difficult to get some people at a meeting, but if we organize uh, with an agenda meeting by Zoom, then or whatever big matter, then uh, then of course uh, you get uh, the people and they are there and they are dedicated for one hour to that and that's nice. I think. Yes. It's okay. The, the UPC is in. Yes, I'm back. <laughs> I had a, had a small uh, internet glitch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Excellent. All right, gentlemen. Um, you know, I wish you all uh, a very good evening, and and once again, thank you so very much for uh, for making this a great session. And uh, I'd also like to thank all the people who, who tuned in to this session. Uh, I'm sure it was quite uh, informative. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so 
<laughs> I couldn't put it here, but. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you very much for the invitation. It has been a pleasure, you. You guys. Yes. Uh, it's my my pleasure. Next time I come, I'll try to stop by and say hello in person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the first person will probably uh, she is uh, Massimo uh, in October. <laughs> uh, no. Yes. Yeah. At the yes. micro salon, you, you in do micro salon. It at the micro yes. salon in the room. Yeah, okay. Super. I don't know. Juan, are you doing micro salon in uh, Spain this year? Any, we any idea? Are, we are trying to. Um, we are trying to see how to uh, to do it. It's going to be a little bit uh, difficult because of all the uh, things about how many people can be. Uh, close to the so we are trying to find a way we really want to do it and if that happens it's going to be in december again so uh mm -hmm. we'll see you and um, so we'll be grateful to try to to make it somehow at least time. we'll keep our fingers crossed yeah <laughs> yes. yes thank you for everyone who joined the the meeting and thanks a lot for the invitation it has been a pleasure it was Thank nice. You. It was fun and nice. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Bye. 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 Bye.